Film star interviewed Oscar Ramirez Lucero, a San Jose State University student who was a recipient of last year's Santa Clara County, Office of Immigrant Relations, New Americans Fellowship Stipend, or, NAF. Lucero went through an immersion program that allowed him to observe the county's diversity program, and to make recommendations on how to improve the services for migrants. My name is Oscar Ramirez. I'm at, currently at San Jose State. I'm studying uh, Applied and Computational Mathematics, and I'm 24 years old. Yeah, okay. Um, yes. How, how long have you been in this country? Uh, it's going to be 20 years this December. Oh, okay. 20 years. Uh, what brought you to the U.S.? Uh, uh, right. Uh, I, in, in, in Mexico, in my home country, uh, I was doing uh, really well academically in mm-hmm. schools. Um, ha- however, uh, my parents felt that the current education system over there and my professors and teachers um, didn't, didn't uh, appreciate uh, my ability to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, they would uh, often, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, put me in detention or, or uh, you know, keep me after class for oh, saying no. the right answers before oh. the teacher would, you know. Oh. I was, I was uh, understimulated. I would, you know, uh, want to learn more in, in the in the class, and the, but the teachers didn't want to appreciate that. Um, there was also a growing uh, danger around my, my city and my area. Mm-hmm. And um, my, uh, my uh, uncle has, pre- have pre- has previously went to the United States. And, uh, and uh, you know, my, my dad talked with my uncle, and they, you know, they were talking about how a better a school system there is over here mm-hmm. and a better living situation as well. So, um, yeah, 20 years ago, my, my family and I uh, went to the United States. For education, yeah. computational math. How? What's the application for that? What does that? What? What work do you? Would you do? Right, right. It's it's very broad. Um, I'm focusing on um, discrete and computational mathematics. So that focuses on sort of the underlayer of software development and software engineering. So instead mm-hmm. of, um, yeah, sure, we learn about programming and code, but we also learn about the mathematics um, behind the algorithms, and uh, and and the mathematics of computers. Uh, and, and, and analyzing numbers, which can be, you know, used for business uh, or uh, all sorts of other applications. Yeah. Have you set your sights on any specific U.S. company for, for that yeah. study? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I had some work intern- interning yeah. for both Google and App- Apple. Okay. For both Google and Apple. And um, uh, I was able to um, set up networks there mm. and, and hopefully... Um, after I finish with my degree, we can definitely set up something long term over there. Okay. So tell us how did you qualify for the New Americans Fellowship program? Um, uh, when when yeah. did you get in? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I did the New American Fellowship last summer mm-hmm. of 2021. And uh, I applied through my eligibility was through going to uh, Santa Clara School and living in Santa Clara. So I currently live in Santa Clara and I attend San Jose oh. State. For, 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 for a university. How, how did you find out about the program? It was through news networks like this. My, my, my um, Spanish language news networks uh, talked about this in a segment, and my mother uh, said I should apply, and I did so. And here you are now. Here I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, did, so did you get the stipend, and how are you going to use it? Yeah, definitely. The stipend helped a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was planning to work during the summer, mm-hmm. um, but uh, being able to uh, attend and, and be part of this program mm-hmm. um, allowed me to do uh, do great work for the community, mm-hmm. as well as uh, you know get paid way way more than uh, you know a summer job or a part time job. Yes. Um, and allowed me to, and allowed me to collect funds to pay for my next semesters at school, which oh, wow. definitely definitely okay. grateful for that. Okay. Um, in your neighborhood or work or in school, uh, what do you think is or are the problems that excludes immigrants from making decisions and issues that impact their, their lives and life? Mm-hmm. For, for yourself, from your point of view, which, which is the biggest problem in your community that excludes immigrants? Definitely. It's, 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 I believe it's the lack of uh, access to information mm-hmm. and lack of representation. And that, I believe that comes from uh, a little bit of the fear of um, you know immigrant families not wanting to uh, uh, be pretty loud in, in, in you know in where they live based on their situation. They don't want to be afraid of um, being uh, persecuted or 
or um, you know, mm-hmm. get their lives changed because they wanted to speak up about something. So I believe uh, uh, people don't have the knowledge of sort of like the protections that, that governments can give to our, our immigrant families mm-hmm. and, uh, and therefore stay quiet and uh, don't participate in like city hall hearings or, or, or maybe um, uh, uh, surveys and questionnaires that the county uh, mm-hmm. goes out to communities to ask because they don't want to participate because they don't want to uh, endanger their lives. Okay, so now that uh, with NAF under your belt and hopefully you're you're fully equipped now, uh, how how are you going to change that situation uh, personally? Right, right. So through NAF, uh, I was um, able to make a lot of great connections to a lot of community centers, community leaders, mm-hmm. and I have a lot of emails and, and phone numbers and contacts of people that do great work around the community mm-hmm. and great work with uh, our immigrant population. Um, these you know the networks that. I would have never have known how to reach out or, or you know, get connected with them. So thanks, thanks to this uh, program, I'm able to um, be able to reach out. And, and, and me as an uh, undocumented uh, a person with a family um, can reach out to these people and say, hey, you know, my family is sort of dealing with this. I know other undocumented families sort of have these questions. Mm-hmm. Is there any way um, we can work something with, work, work with the community to um, address these issues and uh, uh, yeah, de- definitely having those networks and contacts are a big Spe- help. Specifically, which agencies in the county are you speaking about uh, um, for those connections and those resources? Right, right. So there's this uh, specifically through the through sort of our networking and interviewing with different uh, community members. Mm-hmm. There's this school um, in San Jose called uh, Escuela Popular. It's oh, a very... I know that. I know that place. Yeah. Do you know that place? It's a very, really good school. Um, a lot of people don't know, but it allows um, people who didn't finish their high school degrees to uh, work to get their um, high school diplomas, not their GED. GED, not not only their GED, but their actual high school diplomas. Even if they didn't, um, you know, graduate from a high school, maybe they came from another country, didn't finish their high schools, they want to come and finish that up. They can do that at Escuela Popular, which is really helpful, and their um, community resource uh, uh, outreach representative. Um, his name is Roger Regarin. He's a really good advocate for a lot of immigration issues, and um, he's helped a lot of uh, community members, a lot of teachers that work at the school, and me, myself, personally, with uh, a lot of immigration questions and um, just all sorts of outreach that, uh, you know, anyone in my family or anyone I know that's also undocumented, I send them to to um, the, these that uh, resource to um, get any questions done and things like that. Yeah, well, the unfortunate thing is... Uh, uh, undocumented people can't vote. And That's right. Short of not being able to vote, what else do you think can we do so that uh, immigrants can be included in policy making? What, what do you think, we, what else can we do? If you can't vote, mm-hmm. how, what else can you do? Yeah, through, through this program, I sort of learned that our allies are our best friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, being loud and, and you know, um, using advocacy to sort of talk about your story um, you know, let people know, um, put a face behind the word you know, immigrant, you know what I mean? And um, allow these, uh, allow our allies to see what we need, see our work, and see what we do in our community so that they can, you know, use their voices that they can use and, 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 and you know, take that to the polling booth and definitely make changes that, um, you know, they've seen or heard with uh, their immigrant population that through in, in their city. Yeah, this coming election year, for instance, uh, is there any uh, any idea that pops up into your mind about what else you can do? You know what the situation is. <laughs> we right. had four years of that, and you know mm-hmm, what, mm-hmm. what else can we do about that? I mean, uh, in time for the election. Right. Uh, I think the the biggest thing is perseverance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, uh, definitely uh, immigration is a big issue and a big sort of talking point for many politicians. But yeah, just most, mostly perseverance and uh, keep, keep going with uh, speaking about your story to, to, to our allies and, and, um, okay. and you know, putting immigrants in, in the light that they should be put in, for sure. Do you have any personal message uh, thinking about the program and uh, what, what you might uh, advise people who might want to apply? What, what do you think uh, you would advise them to do? I think that uh, people should, people who are able to uh, apply and join the the program should definitely 
uh, make make their attempt to do that. Uh, this program is very helpful t for anyone who wants to um, grow their network and and learn about the the inner workings of the government and also uh, find find sort of value in, in in being an immigrant in in the United States and and see that there's a lot of people who want to foster um, immigrants and and help you grow uh, and, and and achieve uh, you know all sorts of things. The New Americans Fellowship is on its sixth year. Previously, only DACA recipients applied for the NAF program. This year, VAWA recipients, UNT visa holders, TPS, asylum and refugee status holders, can also apply. Filipinos who fit the qualifications can apply until the extended deadline on April 15, 2022. For details, please visit their website at www.sccoir.org slash NAF.